All right, so we will continue on with the MPI fund talking about MPI collectives. So you've talked a little bit about communication between point-to-point -point processes, and MPI has a categorical group called collective communications. And with collective communications, what we basically want to enable is mechanisms for processes to be able to communicate whatever information they need to an appropriate group. So this doesn't mean that everyone gets all of the information. You could be in a special group where you only get a select amount of information from one group or another, and we call those communication groups. And so the goal that we have with MPI collectives are to ensure that all of our processes or ranks are going to reach a certain point. And we do that through what we call barrier operations. And barrier operations basically say, hey, you got to hold up and wait until we tell you you can go. Okay. Then we also want to make sure that we can share data with all ranks and all processes. We call that a broadcast. A broadcast is just basically, you know, you get a news alert. Everyone gets the alerts on their phone that's broadcasted to you. So it doesn't matter what group you're in, you will get that communication. Then we also have uh, special operations that are going to be based off of a specific rank on the data, and we call those reduced operations. Then we have other types of operations or computations that are going to spread data across different ranks, and those are what we call scatter and gather operations. So MPI collectives, um, we have a number of different collective operations that are involved. Uh, a lot of these, once you understand the, the idea that it is based off of the communication group, everything else is just understanding what that specific collective operation accomplishes. So we have uh, broadcast, gather, scatter, reduce, all to all, all reduce and barrier, a few others in between, but those are our main collective operations that we'll be discussing. Okay, and so the first operation that we can take into account is what we call our broadcast operation. And so broadcast is basically going to make sure that a message is being transmitted from one process to all the other processes on the in the communication group. And so with the broadcast, you're going to have the specific MPI commands and the variables that you spent, that you send in. But the most important thing is the MPI com group that it goes to. And so with broadcast, if you do MPI com world, then it's going to go to all of our points. So in this diagram, we see here that we are receiving a message from process two. That message is a broadcast and it goes to all of our subsequent processes in our communication group. So you see the yellow is transmission or receiving. It is transmitted to our com communicator and then it is sent to all of our processes. So that is the way a broadcast works. It's the most simplest uh, collective operation that you can use in MPI. Can anyone give me a example of a broadcast, um, how it might be used, even if it's a real life example, not necessarily computing? I kind of gave a similar one in the beginning. Anyone want to share another? Who should I follow on that? I see a big smile here. Do you have a, a scenario that you want to share, an example of a broadcast? You could send a message to everyone that uh, her list is full, but you can't sign up anymore. Yeah, so something like that. Just simple, a simple announcement that's sent to everyone could be, could be considered a broadcast, okay? And so it's just these are the type of scenarios that you have to consider to determine the type of collective that you want to use for transmission, transmitting your data. Okay, so another process that we can consider is what we call a gather. And so a gather is another collective process that we would use. And it's gonna be similar to if we want to send a message 
to all, but instead what we want to do is gather all of the messages from all of our processes. So in our diagram here, what we see is we'll have our processes from zero to three lined out. Each one of those is transmitting data and it's only being transmitted all of that data to a specific communication group. So we see here on process, we'll just call it process one. And within that process, it could be specific sub processes or threads that are receiving that communication. And so we could implement a gather function in the same manner using our, our root um, transmission of sends and receives for transmitting it. And so instead of that, we use our gather for being more efficient, okay? So we can do a broadcast where we're gonna send all of that data or we can do an inverse of that, which is going to be our gather. Any questions about the MPI gather? When might be um, a, a scenario in which we could use a, need to use an MPI gather? I think in this example, that we just, excuse me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll think in this example, the, the dance example, mm -hmm. where each of the, each of the um, workers will um, need to send the, the computed um, like number of trials to the manager and then the manager co collects them then computes the final results. See, that's a really good example. If you have a situation, maybe let's say you have a process or a manager that needs all of their parts and let's say it's for um, a, a report or some type of you know, document, their, their code segments need to be checked in. All of those get sent to the manager and the manager compiles that results. So that's a great example of it. Any other examples? Thank you for participating. Okay, one is good enough. I won't, I won't uh, push my luck. And so other um, uses of gathers are, can be used for if you need to send longer messages, it can allow for varying link counts for different message sizes as well. So different uh, type of uses for applying that using the gather operation. And so now we also can consider what we have as a scatter. And basically a scatter is going to be similar to a, a broadcast, but it is being sent or transmitted from a specific communication group or process. And then that result is being distributed specifically to different groups. And so you can split the message into specific pieces and then those segments are going to be what are transmitted to your different groups. So, you know, in this diagram here, we see a good example of it from we have our root process of uh, one, two, that is being transmitting the data to our other processes. Okay. Any questions about scatter? Continue on. So our next uh, collective example that we have is for reduce. And so reduce is basically if we want to take the, the sum of many of our different uh, processes and subsums of all of those processes and sum them together. And so with the reduction, we can combine all of that information from our different processes, apply that sum of those subtotals and then distribute it to the appropriate communication. So we can do um, a global reduction in different cases. And so what would be a, a good way for us to to compare a, a type of reduction operation for scientific simulation. Um, and one thing to consider is with uh, weather, weather simulations. Um, that's communicating different calculations and different processes from subgroups to other groups. And so in what other, what meant specific manner would a reduce operation be beneficial in that type of weather modeling simulation.
maybe you'd want to compute some average quantity like you measure temperature at a bunch of different points and get some like average temperature for a region you would want to like do a reduce um, in order to compute that average right so basically like if you're you need to get uh kind of like a, a sub temperature and you need to do that to get a more approximate or localized average so that would be a, a good example of when you might do a need to when you would use a reduce. Great example. Any other examples or questions about when you might want to use it? No. All right. And so we have a number of different types of operations that we use to for reduce. And so these can be if you need to do a sum of a, a specific um, specific data, you can do getting the the max, the min, whatnot, and the different types that are allowed for those type of operations. And so with the max lock and min lock operations, these are just going to perform or provide you with the, the rank of that process and those values. And then you have the different uh, data types that you can use for MPI. For all of the data types, MPI has a derived or a wrapper type for that. So you can think of it just like a traditional floating int is going to be an MPI float int as well, and so forth for double, long, et cetera. Um, users also have the capability to create their own user-defined MPI operations as well. Um, maybe by the end of the summer, you'll progress to that point and you'll become MPI ninjas and you'll be creating your own operations. So we've talked about um, some of the other operations that are reductions or um, communications to specific groups, but you can also do those collective communications that are collectively communicating that operation to all groups. And so you can think about this as a, a ultimate all to all communication where you have, you know, different, uh, let's say you're in a university setting and every, every college or department in the university has a special announcement about Friday. And instead of just communicating, you know, like the, the College of Physics or the, the Physics Department communicates their, their message to physics students, they decide to communicate it to the entire campus. So that would be an example of if you were to do like a all gather, all reduce, all of the different colleges or departments sending their announcements to everyone at the same time. So what, what kind of um, problems might that cause? If you have so many different communications from different groups going out at once, what could be an issue? Resource contention, right? Um, you know, your interconnect is bandwidth limited. So if you send, if everyone is trying to communicate at the same time, there is going to be a contention of resources and there are going to be uh, extended wait times for a process to get uh, the effective communication that it needs. Okay, so what might be a way that you could effectively try to deal with things like that? Using queue, putting um, jobs or expression in queue, and using um, all the things that the yeah, yeah, using different type of communication or scheduling strategies to to figure out what is the basic uh, most effective communication approach. So instead of maybe doing a all reduce or all gather. To, to all communications, maybe only specific sub communication groups are needed. So a big idea behind effective MPI communication is that when you have communication with MPI, it's going to be across different nodes, and then you're going to have resources 
on the internet and on your interconnect. They're going to slow down uh, the processes of information. So you want to figure out an effective strategy on the number of different communication groups that you need, as well as when to when to communicate to those groups so you don't have uh, resource contention. And so again, the same format, when you have all to all uh, scattered or gather or all to all gather, um, same information, you're communicating those results from all different communication groups to all the other communication groups. And the same thing with the all reduce, you receive a specific um, amount of uh, or process of data from a communication group, and then that data can be communicated specifically to another uh, entity or another communication group. And so again, and uh, another important communication is our barrier operation. And a barrier can be just in place as a fail safe to make sure all processes reach a specific point before they move on. So a barrier is basically that uh, brick wall or gate that uh, all processes have to come to. And once everyone is there, then uh, they'll, the program is allowed to continue. So in these different collective operations, uh, we've seen how they basically can utilize different communication groups and send and receive messages to transmit um, different messages. So we are about to break for lunch, but one thing that you want to consider and we'll revisit during our interactive session this afternoon is You've done one implementation of computing pi using sends and receives. Now, how would you implement that using collective functions? So we'll go over this in detail in um, on the afternoon interactive section, but uh, this will be your next uh, interlude related to MPI with collectives. How can you use the MPI um, collective routines to do the same computation of darts?